it's Ronnie. I was going to show you something cool, but the coolness turned off. Let me see if I can get in the shade here and zoom in. I'll point my banner. Not the corn, but right there, that little gold line. And the beauty dark green nuts vinos and that pivot was running. I've been home for about 30 minutes, but I had stuff to do. The pivot was running, and the breeze was blowing directly from across that field up over this hill to my house. And it was 91 degrees, and I could feel the humidity. But it was cooler because on the front of the house, no, sir, the front of the house is 96 degrees in the shade, and now it's 94 already in the shade right here on, on the back side of that tree right there. But it was only 90, 91 degrees. And that is, you know, as a crow flies, three-fourths of a mile away, right up there where that pivot was running. It must have timed out and got its inch put on or inch and a half, whatever. They're going to be running that every freaking other day now because them beans are going to start uh, pollinating and blooming. If you see the cornfield, dry land, we don't, we're short seven inches of rain all year, but we never got much in the last three weeks at all, hardly. That's dry land last year. That stuff made over 200 bushel. Look at it. It's curled up. When you can see in between the freaking corn plants, but that's not mine. He's got insurance. It's my neighbor. It's dry land. I said the alfalfa is going to be going dormant. It's so freaking dry. But I wanted to show you the temp difference uh, from... Uh, a big pivot running because the water temp coming out of that pivot is about 53 degrees and it will carry through the air a good mile mile and a half if you have a like eight mile an hour breeze like we got here and hang about 20 feet off the ground and come here okay but it turned off <laughs> and uh down here on the bottom uh they can these pivots can pump 15 to 1600 gallons a minute okay this is some of the highest amount on a regular well you can pump anywhere in the united states is right down here on our bottom 15 to 1600 gallons a minute normal if you get out farther west you go or south or north if you can get a thousand gallon a minute you're kicking butt but all of them around here on the bottom anywhere from 11 1200 to 15 to 60 i know this one and there's a couple more down there uh, you know from 20 years ago when they set them up for pumping 1600 gallon a minute and that don't mean you're wasting water that means you can put on more water faster so you can turn the speed up on a pivot so it makes a circle faster they're always going to put on at least an inch of water when they make a circle and if, if you're putting on a bunch of water you can run the pivot faster say if you can do it at 1500 gallons a minute you have that much water where you can't see through the i was going to show you where you can't see through the water and, and see any of the grass or anything or the beans or nothing down there from a distance even if you're cold you can't see through it it's pumping that much water but that means it can they're not wasting water that means it can travel in that circle so much faster if you're pumping a thousand gallons an hour you have to slow down that pivot a third of what if you're pumping 1500 to get that inch we're still they're still going to put on a constant inch every circle what they're going to do but yeah you can't see through it when it was running but it turned off by the time i had time to come show you but maybe later they're going to be running these it's going to be 104 plus tomorrow they're saying I said it's 94 to 98 right now. That corn is burning up. It's toast. Last year it made over 200 bushel. This year it would be lucky if you get 70 or 80, if that. But I said, sure they got insurance. But yeah, that pivot, that big line aiming straight away from me down there with the little white box. That's when that'll pump 1,500 gallon a minute. And you can't see the tower. You can't see anything when it's running. But it shut off. It made it circle. And look how beautiful green them beanos are down there. I guarantee you if they're blooming in two days, and it's going to be 104 tomorrow, they'll be running that again in two days. Usually you'll run an inch a week on corn and beans. But when beans are blooming, they don't like heat. And that water will cool the beans down. 
the corn here is tossed because it's dry land. And corn, it's pollinated. They'll still run an inch a week now. But with the beans, if they're starting to bloom, that means they're going to put on pods. And the more pods and the more water and the cooler it is, the bigger the beanos you get, more beans you get in the pot. I'll guarantee you that thing will be running in two days, even if they put on an inch of water a day. Because I, I drove around that section that way coming by and looking, and I didn't see any blooms yet, but they're going to be blooming this week. And that heat, beanos hate, just like a garden, if you're a gardener, you got like string beans or any kind of beans. They hate freaking, they don't mind heat a little bit, as long as you got moisture, but if it's uber hot, they hate it, especially when they're flowering. So that's the kicker I got there. I was going to get my thermometer out. Yeah, what's the side of my house now? Uh, here, let's look. 91.8, 91.9 in the shade on plastic. I want to see what it is out front. See, I said, I, I work in front of my garage. I don't have any trees to block anything right where I work inside the garage if I have the door open. I'll tell you right now, it's 96 inside the garage, and it's insulated, and it's been shut. I left the doors cracked open last night when I got down to 68. I'm curious to see what the, air, what the ground temp and shit, you know. Like you got air temp in NASCAR and then you got the track temp. Wow, it's toasty right here. Let's just see what the track temp is. Ah, uh, I got so much glitter, I'll see if I can make some shade. Uh, here's the track temp in front of my garage. 120.9. You don't believe it's hot when I work out here and the sun comes up. You know, the sun comes up from this direction. I guess I could pan back now. But I can't see it because of the glare. Give me a minute. I can still feel that cooler breeze coming off of the bottom. Oh, I just dropped my smoke. And I got ashes on my phone. And now it won't go down. Oh, well, I guess I'm zo zoomed out as far as I can go. It's been that day. Guys used the truck shake truck on my side over the weekend. Punched a hole about the size of your thumb in one and then it's just sitting there with a flat and I had like 12 trailers to move. So I had to go to the shop, spend two hours. Oh, now the wind whistle won't even let me smoke. There we go. Yeah, 120.9 right here. And if I go against that door, I'll guarantee it's higher. I can't tell, but let's look. It's still climbing. 121.2. <coughs> yeah, it's hot right here. And this is where I do, <laughs> do the work. <laughs> That's why I try to do it before the sun comes over. But I'm not going to put any trees over my driveway because I can't get stuff in. And then if a windstorm comes, take out my shit. So that's why I got this open eel. And in the wintertime, it sucks. But then in spring, this melts off faster. Yeah. But wow, it's hot. <laughs> it's going to be 104 tomorrow. Excuse me. I got some uh, different... Uh, allergy antihistamine little, uh, uh what is it, uh, generic xyzel. You take once a day little tiny pills, and my sinus ain't bothering me near as bad, plus I'm using son, so something, it's, uh, basically cayenne pepper extract, uh, nasal spritz before I go to bed, and geez, I can actually almost breathe through the night. It's cool, but wow, it's hot. See? And tomorrow's going to be 104, so here's the plan. <laughs> Let me put my thermometer away. It's going to be 104 in the shade. Pickups are going. Update. All the brakes were fixed after three different days in the mornings before it got too hot. Had it all doing great. Saturday, kind of tweaking myself, twisting my body up, messing me up a little bit by being stupid. And, but I had it all, all the brakes working great. 
go bop down the road and up and back a half mile, get on the brakes because they got drum brakes on the back. They got to be adjusted. You know, one was dragging. One was, I, the other brand new cylinder was leaking last weekend. I got replaced all that. Got everything working great. Up and down the road, then I was bopping down my big hill, stand on the brakes, and the pedal goes boom, and then goes clear to the floor. Like, oh crap, here we go again. Yeah. Well then, pull back in the driveway at like 2 in the afternoon. It was 99 degrees out here. Uh, see where that brake line right there? That rubber thing? If you can see my finger that, that didn't break. And where it goes into here, there's a metal line, but I ain't opening the hood. On the other side, the metal line rusted through, and all of a sudden, I had good brakes and pressure. Boom! Blew that apart. So then I had to go to North Park, hour and a half, drive a messing around to get a 20-inch brake line with the fittings on it but at least they had that and then I had to make a new brake line that went 20 inches from the diverter splitter valve for the front and yeah it's working great now so I ain't had time to get after the Kia I got the solenoid uh, hopefully uh, Friday night and Saturday night the temperature at night is supposed to get down like 74 75 Whew, and that's at night in the dark. Uh, uh, close to 102 to 104 again Saturday. But I need to... If my body's feeling good. I said I beat my body up too much. Uh, Sunday I would have had two hours to play. And it's going to take at least six if everything works right on this. And instead I clean my house. Mop my kitchen floor. Scrub the toilets. Vacuumed. Dusted. Did all my laundry. All my dishes. God said, you got to take a day off, Ronnie. Ronnie, you got to stop. You're beating your body up too bad, which I was. Because, you know, 14 hours of the pop on on that one. You know, once I get going on stuff, yeah, I'll drag feet till I get after it. Once I get after it, I don't stop till it's done. But then you can't get parts. I need a beer. But, yeah, no parts for the BMW yet. I called CCD BMW. Apparently, you got to try to get the other... The other four parts, it takes seven to fix the fuel pump on my BMW motorcycle. That awesome GS1200, R1200 GS that I got, you've seen it. It's awesome. With the big monster knob. Oh, that's so fun. Can't drive it, but it's so damn hot I wouldn't be driving it right now. Apparently, California had three of the parts. Everywhere in the United States had four of the parts. They need uh, five plus two, seven. So, yeah. Five plus two is, yeah, there's seven for you snowflakes. They ain't got the parts. I think they're going to have to get them from Germany. It's already been over a month. But when it's this hot, I ain't going riding anyway. I'm going to work on stuff till noon. It was 88 degrees this morning here in the shade at 9.30. And I got up to 96, 98. I said tomorrow's going to be 104 then around 99 to 100, and then uh, Friday evening, and uh, they say Friday right around 99 to 100, Saturday 104, 105 is what they're showing. So, yeah, I ain't giving you much time in the morning to work on stuff when it's cool. But I get done when I get done. I'm out here all by myself. I'm not going to die a heat stroke or overwork, and I get, you know, I'll work till I'm sweating like a piglet, and then pigs don't sweat, by the way. <laughs> That's funny. It's true, though. Why do you think? Why do you think pigs wallow in the mud holes? They don't sweat, just like dogs don't sweat. They got to breathe out their nose and their mouth to exhaust heat. So there. And I don't know. I don't think cows sweat either. I think they got to pretty much breathe out to human sweat. There you go. I don't know. Whales sweat. They're in water already. They probably don't need to. The water temp probably ain't that hot. Yeah, I think about stuff like that. Yeah, I should look it up someday. But yeah, it's gonna be enough. <laughs> Overnight, like 74, 75, if I can get after the Kia Saturday morning, if nothing blows up, and Sunday morning. But I'm not going to have much time, and it's going to be miserable even if the sun ain't over to this side shining while I'm working. But I'm only going to do what I can do. I'm out here all by myself with my weapons <laughs> where I'm safe. But if I'm working on something, and all of a sudden, boo, and I overdo it, and I... Get pinned under something by being an idiot or smashed or sliced. Or I need to call 911 
or have an exa heat exhaustion or heat stroke or something, by the time, if I could get to my phone and make the phone call, by the time the EMS guys would be here, I'm pretty much a goner 90% anyway. It'd be over 30 minutes. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm being in this heat and working on stuff and not getting in a hurry. I am being very careful. I said, I'm out here all by myself. There's nobody here to yell and scream at and say, hey, call the freaking goddamn 911. This fucking thing fell on me or it chopped my arm off or something. No, I'm on my own. You learn to work safe. And accidents do happen like hold my hand, but that's a long way from, you know smashed me to death but farmers and stuff have it happen every day with uh people around that they work with i'm out here all by myself said so i i'm not getting any hurry the, i got vehicles to drive i'm not gonna push it i get them done i get them done okay but i'm not gonna end up get them done and end up dead <laughs> just before i was ready to drop the jacks and it falls on my ass I, I, yeah, it ain't that important, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see tomorrow. But yeah, it sucks that pivot turned off. I wanted you to see how much water that puts out a 1,500-gallon-a-minute pivot. You can't see the towers. You can't see nothing, even from the side. It's just awesome. But that means it moves faster. They're not wasting any water at all, you freaking Greenpeace freaks. Putting on No, they're putting on one inch of water constant as it moves. But they can move that pivot in 18 hours in a circle instead of 24 to 26. And you get down under 800 gallon a minute on a regular circle on the size of a pivot like that. You're talking 32 hours. So then, if you can't, you got to run it constant when it's hot if you want to keep your plants alive if you're in sand. You never turn it off. And it fucking diesel's expensive as a bitch. And most of these run off of diesel. There's a few electric ones. I haven't seen any propane ones around here. Diesel's five something a gallon, and they'll burn five gallon an hour. 25 gallon an hour? Or five, five to seven gallon an hour, I believe, is what the average was. I haven't checked and asked the neighbors lately. I believe, you know, a couple of years ago, it was like five to seven gallon an hour to run the diesel engine to pump the water to cover the crops. That's seven gallon an hour. So that's times, just call it five bucks, $35 an hour times 36 hours. That'd be 350 times three and a half would be about $1,400 to make one circle, one inch of water on, on their plants. Yeah, that's not good. But we're all dealing with it. P pain's just over 220 or something yet. Yeah, peace, love, have a heart, have a heart. I'm taking the Lincoln tomorrow because I need to put. Uh, new fresh gas in it and it got all dusty and dirty anyway and it ain't throwing any codes when it's hot but once it cools off toward fall and winter it's going to throw a freaking lean code again but I do have all the pieces and I'm not going to work on that because it's not throwing codes and I had to live scanner hooked up it's doing fine when it gets cold whatever gasket down there is leaking then it must be getting a little hard and then it lets a little air through but it's not even it's not going to hurt it and it's not even throwing codes now. I'll have it fixed before it gets cold out. But I'm going to chill and I'm going to take the link. And it's got AC at 104 degrees on the way home. <laughs> I'm taking the Lincoln because I need to put new gas in it anyway. It, the gas in it was like a month old and I only burned out half a tank. So I'm going to put new good gas in it. And uh, I'd say I'd wash it again, but yeah, it'll get all dirty. I need to do all that myself when it cools off but yeah i'm gonna take the lincoln i'm not gonna be driving home in 104 degrees in the shade when i got a vehicle with ac i just gotta leave really early like 15 minutes earlier than normal so i can drive 25 miles an hour on the gravel and the highway asphalt road into norfolk so it's sun's getting later and later come up and it's kind of dark and the deer are starting to run like idiots and if a deer hits my car 
I'll be pissed. So yeah, 25 to 30 mile an hour, you're a hell of a lot safer and we'll see him in the dusk of dawn AO than driving 50. So I'm gonna leave 15 minutes early and that should get me there on time and drive about 30, 35 mile an hour. If I hit a deer with that car, with that Lincoln, even though it's beautiful, it's a 05, you know, and blast them in the front and all the airbags go off or boom like it did to my Kia because they don't have airbags in it anymore because it's been hit so many times, you know, and just take that front out. Uh, they'd look it up and say, hey, your car's told that we're giving you this much and that's it. And it's told and we ain't going to pay to fix it. So it's drivable. Here's some cash. Piss off. So I don't want to hit any deer. But I'm going to drive Lincoln tomorrow and go slow. Hopefully no deer come stomping out like an idiot and just blast into the side of my doors like I've had happen before. All right, this is dragging on. Peace. Love, have a heart, have a heart. Man, it's hot. And if you're out working in this stuff, God bless you guys too. I said, I don't have AC in that truck I run, and it's black. It's 100. It's on where I'm at is on top of the concrete lots with them big semi-trailers. It's 155 degrees there, 138 inside the truck, the 150. But as long as there's a breeze blowing, yeah, that's why I keep my awesome womanly figure, except I don't have any boobs. But yeah, that's how I don't get fat. It's called the MP Global Weight Reduction System. 140 degrees all day, every day. Cool breeze, except in the morning when it was 72 this morning for an hour. <laughs> But I'm used to it, but it's going to be over 100, and I'm, i got to put gas in the Lincoln, newer gas. It's down to half a tank, and I'm not going to run below a half a tank of fuel on any vehicle with electric fuel pump, because that's what helps. So i got to get it filled up. There's some ideas for you. But yeah, the breeze is kicking. It, it's pretty cool when I'm standing here in the shade sweating, and it's 94 degrees in the shade, and there's a 8-mile-an-hour breeze. And it's bearable uh, compared to what I've been in all day. Whew, cool breeze. Y'all take care. I said, get inside. If you get too hot, don't get stupid. You have to freaking remember, if you don't take care of this person right here, nobody else is going to give a shit till you drop, all right? No matter what you're doing, you'll know if you're pushing your limit. Screw the bosses or whatever. If you think you got to get this stuff done, hey, you know your limit. You start getting woozy, start getting too hot, get in five, ten minutes, you'll be good to go again. Drink a lot of water, a lot of salt. I got salt, buffered salt pills because I sweat a lot. When I do start sweating, I sweat like a big dog and I lose a lot of salt. My blood pressure goes foofy. But yeah, there's an idea for you. It's called buffered salt heat, heat something pills. Yeah, heat. I got them in the house. I, I carry them with me in the summer. But yeah, there you go. But yeah, grass. I, I ran the hose on this one. That's my miniature lilac. That's the other miniature lilac. I ran the hose on them four hours apiece today. I mean yesterday, Sunday, when it was 98. The super slow. But look, I want to show you something cool. They bloom more than once. Look. Means I gave them some water and they're dying yet. Look at this. My miniature lilacs, this is the third time they bloomed. It takes them a, you know, they got to get about this size, but look at that. That's beautiful, ain't it? And I said, I gave them a drink super slow with a hose for like four or five hours each. And they were just starting, you know, I showed you last video. They were dead blooms. Now they're all blooming out. They're starting. Look at, there's a bunch. I don't think they're going to like 104 degrees. To a hundred for the next week, but hey, they're tough sons of bitches, just like me. Hey, there goes the neighbor with square bales. You see that? Oh yeah, they still we still square bale shit around here. But yeah, there's my miniature lilacs. They're not dead. I just gotta give them water. But yeah, that front one, that it's digging it. It's gonna bloom again. But I, I'll probably have to run water this next weekend again, uber slow, and give them another drink. These two are already looking kind of rough. But yeah, beautiful. I tell you, the miniature lilacs will bloom three or four times a year. Kick ass! I know all kinds of neat stuff. You watch me and watch my dumb videos, you'll think I'm an idiot and a freak, but you'll never be bored and you'll always learn something. Mwah. 
Red Bushy, man. Ciao. I love you. I'll be back.